Hey everyone, it's Kirk with Prismatic Powders. I have another tech tip for you today, but before I get into that, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and like this video. That way we know you want more of this content coming your way. All right, now let's get into it. Uh, everyone who sprayed powder for uh, a decent amount of time knows that not all powders are created the same. Some are light and fluffy, they fluidize easy, spray really well, while others may be a little older, absorb some oxygen, or just their general makeup, maybe a really fine metallic powder, and they can be a little bit cakey. This video is to help you, give you tips to help you uh, deal with those cakey powders before you fluidize. So, we're gonna jump over here and give you a little demonstration. Okay, so, You've got a cakey powder, you've poured it in your fluidizer, it doesn't seem like it fluidizes very well. Uh, maybe it packs up in the pickup tube, causes some spraying issues. What we recommend doing is using a flour sifter. You've got two common types right here. You have the standard kind of pour and shake deal here. These can be a little messy because as you shake it, they can kind of spill over the edge. So definitely recommend you get one where the di diameter of it uh, fits the diameter of your hopper. Uh, and then there's this guy. We prefer these canister types, uh, and we're not endorsing any sifter in particular, but uh, we like the kind with the sturdy sifting handle and the double looped agitator. And these are easy because they just fit right over here. Pour your powder in and sift it in. And what that does is it really breaks up the powder, makes it easy for it as it falls in for the air coming in through the bottom of the membrane of the fluidizer to grab that powder and start moving it rather than dumping in a whole bunch all at once. Keeps everything nice, light, and sprayable. Now, the only caveat to these that we would uh, urge caution against or about is that you really need to treat these like any other piece of powder coating equipment that comes into contact with uh, a multitude of powder coating colors. You want to make sure you really clean these out because these can be a source of contamination. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend is staying away from the double mesh strainers because when you have that, those layers of mesh, there can be powder trapped in between those layers and they're a little bit more difficult to clean thoroughly. All right, that's it for this time. Feel free to leave us a comment or a question and we would be glad to answer it. Also, if you have any ideas of videos that you'd like to see upcoming, uh, drop us a line, let us know, and we'll see if we can work that in. Hey everyone, it's Kirk from Prism. I think I might have started too soon. Uh, but before I get into it, make sure that you like our channel and subscribe to our videos. <laughs> make sure that you subscribe to our channel and like this video. It really helps stroke our egos. Now. <coughs> <coughs> Hey everyone, it's Kirk from Prismatic Powders, coming with a Well, that's it. That's what we've got this time.